Candy Rose and Friends invite you to watch their TV show, Recovery Today. They teach from Candy's two 12-step workbooks that are scripture-based. God's written word, if acted on, empowers us to not only become addiction-free, but stay free. Powerful addiction-free testimonies are featured. Barbara, a nurse, shares the health dangers of using alcohol and drugs. To find the TV and radio networks they are on, go to recoverytodaytv.com. Hi, friends. Welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose. That's me. And friends, my co-hosts, Barbara Ferguson and Becky Brewer. I am so grateful to these girls. They, they are also on the board. Hmm. Barbara is the treasurer and Becky is the secretary. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Mike McFarland, uh, he is also our vice president. So we're excited to bring you this show. Uh, we are teaching you from the two 12-step workbooks that I wrote, Recovery Today, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And these workbooks tell you why you need to be saved, how to be saved, and how to maintain a mm-hmm. godly lifestyle. Today we're doing Volume 2, Lesson 9, and the title is, It's Their Fault. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ninth step in the 12 Truths to Freedom. Stop blaming and forgive those who have hurt us. Ephesians four thirty one to 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, mm-hmm. even as God in Christ forgave you. Now the meaning of bitter is sour, resentful, spiteful, angry, mean. And the meaning of wrath is rage, fury, hostility, resentment. The meaning of clamor, chaos, bedlam, commotion. The meaning of bedlam, wild confusion, uproar, turmoil, madhouse. Every human being on this earth has experienced some form of bitterness, resentment, or unforgiveness at one time or another. I'm sure you can relate relate to the meanings of some of those words and see why God wants us to let those nasty feelings go. Anger eats away at us like a terminal Mm -hmm. disease. That's true. When we or our family members are hurt by someone, we end up blaming. Multitudes of people have been a victim of physical or emotional abuse, either as a child or as an adult or both. The meaning of blame is to find fault with, to hold responsible, to place responsibility for. Once we establish that it was another person's sin choice, revenge wants to rear its ugly head. These words are what we do in our mind to ease our conscience for retaliation rationalize, justify, and minimize. Rationalize makes excuses for, justifies, and explains away. The meaning of justify is to excuse, to prove right, to defend, and to make an explanation for. Meaning of minimize is to underestimate intentionally, (coughs) play down what happened, and soft pedal. Human nature's way has always been revenge. We tend to react physically or verbally. That's not how we as Christians with our new spiritual nature should be. Matter of fact, this is what God has to say about revenge. Romans 12 verses 17 to 19 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place for wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Yes. Through movies and television, Hollywood has glorified revenge. Unless we learn the truth found in God's Word, the Bible, we take that same mindset to retaliate physically or verbally. According to our roadmap for life, the Bible, God expects us to do the opposite of that. In Colossians 3.12, he says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. The meaning of long-suffering is long and patient enduring of offense, putting up with. 
the Lord was long suffering, merciful and kind to us, even before we gave our lives to him. Talk about revenge. He could have gotten even with us as we offended him by our continual sinning. He sure put up with us. He expects us to do the same with others. Of course, that doesn't mean to stay in an environment where there is abuse, but it it does mean we are not to get revenge. We are to forgive and not hold that offense in our heart anymore. Barbara, how can you relate to this? I think that is really hard. When someone, you know, when someone hurts me, I usually can get over it pretty fast. But when somebody hurts someone you love, oh yeah, that's when it's hard, especially a child or, or one of your children. Oh, yeah. um, and so, you know, the, the best thing I have found is, first of all, to do nothing at first. Because if you react right away, you're probably not going to act in the, in the mm, correct way. That's it's good. good. And, then, yeah. and so give it some time. It's good. And then, and then, of course, you've always got somebody saying, you need to do this or you need to do that, mm. you know, and kind of getting you going. And so if you just take some time to think about it, but then pray about it. You know, That's God, good, what Barbara. would you have me do? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I used to tell someone that I, I uh, used to train in business. Um, they would get very angry, like at employees, and yell at them. And, you know, they, they probably just, it was probably justified. They probably did something really that they shouldn't have done. But I'd say, you know, you need to leave them thinking about what they did wrong instead of what a jerk you are, you know, you know, um, and it really, I think it really speaks to people and shows that you're different, that you are Mm -hmm. a real true Christian when you react in love and forgiveness instead of attacking. That's good. That's good. good. And what about you, Becky? Ooh, um... This really kind of brings to mind something that that my daughter went through. She went through when I thought I had her in the safest place we'd ever been. She actually went through um, abuse. And, And while she was going through that, um... It was difficult because I was trying to encourage her to forgive, but she was like, I don't want to do that. It's their fault. Like, why am I, they, they need to be, you know, asking my forgiveness. Why do I need to forgive? And so as a Christian and as growing closer and closer with the Lord and, and her not being as far along in her journey with the Lord, I explained to her because I don't want that root of bitterness to grow in you. So by you forgiving, even though it is their fault by you forgiving, then you are, um, you're releasing and, 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 uh, any root of bitterness that could begin in your heart to grow, you're releasing that. Yes. Um, and so there's a lot of, of, um, kind of healing and, and healthy things that it brings to, to us, even though there may be abuse or something that has happened to us, yeah. um, that keeps that root of bitterness from growing in our heart. If we will just not take revenge, not right. lash out, not use right. it as an excuse, not justify a reason for wrongdoing right. or wrong behavior, but just release it and say, I forgive you, then you are released from any root of bitterness. That's right. Amen. Um, do you mind if I say something real quick? Go ahead. You know, uh, I, I've mentioned before that I work in hospice and, um, and I see what bitterness a lot of times does to people. Mm. Um, they mm. carry this bitterness that may have been justified all their lives to mm-hmm. their to the point where they're on their deathbed, they're dying. Their family wants nothing to do with them. Oh. Um, they have no one to visit them. Oh. They have no you know no Sad. one to help them. Um, and it's because they were so bitter that they had no love for anyone. Mm. Oh. And it's a very very lonely place to be. Mm. So it's that old saying that bitterness is like drinking poison hoping the other person will Unforgiveness. die. Oh. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness oh, is like that's that. That's true. Yeah, wow. And um for me uh I had a lot of hurt growing up and and I was constantly blaming everybody mm. else for every all the wrong choices I was doing, I was just kind of blaming because this is the way my life was. Um, for instance, my own father molested me when I was growing up, about 3 to 11. And then when I finally told my mother when I was 15, she didn't know, and, and we left. And uh, I tried to get revenge. I had uh, some guy 
I asked to use his knife and had him drive me over to where my dad, where we had been living with my dad because we had moved out now, moved an apartment. So we go back, and I don't know what time of night it was, but it was dark in the hallway. It was on the second floor, and I'm beating on the door, and I've got this knife. I don't, I don't know how it might have only been about this long. And um, so I'm beating on the door, and all, and I was drunk. And, by, and when he, all of a sudden, he just it surprised me. He opened the door so fast and pushed me down, and, and the way I landed that the knife almost cut my own mm. throat. Wow. I mean, I remember it going like this and him them pinning my hands to the to the floor. And then the guy that I was with came up the stairs. And uh, I, I look back now, and it had to be God that told him to do that because I don't know what would have happened from that point. Wow. And uh, so then my dad, he was always kind of scared of men and uh, uh, fights and stuff. So he backed off me and... And then I, I left. But then another time I went back when he wasn't there and I had a butcher knife stuck down in the in my waistband of my pants and I was determined I was going to kill him this time. And because uh, uh, so much anger had just built up through me through the years and hate. And uh, he wasn't there, but the woman he was living with was. And boy, I guess I scared the fire out of her because... Uh, I just pushed the door open and went on in and said, is my dad here? And I walked right past her. She's a big old woman. I was she about twice the size of me. But I, I was so full of anger and bitterness. It's so much better being a Christian, having the Holy Spirit in you to help you. Because, see, you need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Within your own self, it's hard to deal with all the hurts because you're going to have so many hurts in life. They're just yes. It's just going to happen. The Bible even my. said, Jesus even said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Yeah. But in other words, but don't be alarmed because he's overcame. We can overcome. Mm-hmm. Right. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to AddictionFaithPrograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. And now we're going to show you some testimonies, (coughs) addiction-free testimonies. Hello, uh, my name is Brock Johnson. Um, I was molested at a young age, around six or seven years old, and uh, I started using drugs at around probably about nine or ten. I think it was using anything to fill that void. I've done it all, crack, cocaine, methamphetamines, uh, alcohol, uh, anything that would fill that void, and I wouldn't remember anything. Uh, I've used drugs. I'm 44 now. I've used drugs since I was 14, 13 years old. Um, I've lost uh, a wife. I have a $120,000 house. I just lost another $60,000 house or $70,000 that me and my father built. Um, I had cedar bars, cabinets. Um, I've totaled 12, 13 vehicles. Um, I've lost everything I've ever had, and, and I've had a lot of things in my life. And uh, every time I gain them and go back to drugs, I lose them. Um, you know, I, I suggest that, you know, that you go to Jesus because that's where I found my redemption. And uh, it's, it's not easy at first. It's scary and it's uncomfortable, but that's the way it should be because it don't take long to get comfortable. Um, I just want you to know that, that Jesus loves you and, and uh, he can restore you. And thank you for your time. My name is John Stice. Um, my, I grew up in a broken home. My dad was alcoholic. My mom was Christian. Uh, very young age, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD. I was on Ritalin by kindergarten and uh, grew up from there. I was always pushed to the side. By the age of 13, I was kicked out. I've been on my own since then. I was a junkie, needle junkie by 14, and uh, it just progressed from there. Uh, I found Jesus about 2016. Uh, my life has never been the same. I've always backslid. Uh, it wasn't until recently I had to let everything go. Uh, I lost two wives, I've lost five vehicles and two houses, uh, and I lost a fiancé to suicide uh, about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago in April. Uh, I found Jesus, and when I let that stuff go, the freedom and peace started to come in, and uh, it's all due to being here at Restoration Hope and the people showing me love, and, uh, and that's thanks to the leadership and the guys here. Uh, so there is hope, there is peace and joy finding Jesus. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dale Greenhagen. Um, I come from a family that uh, 
it was emotionally and physically and mentally abusive. Um, in my life, I've uh, went through a lot of downfall. I've been to several prison institutions, not only in California, but in uh, Texas. Um, in those dark places, uh, you know, due to drug addiction and alcoholism, that, that, that those things brought me to prison. And uh, But it was through those dark times where Jesus showed himself to me and uh, allowed me to understand that there was a better way of life. Um, I'm just so thankful that um, I was able to experience the peace and love and joy that Jesus has given me, and it has broke the chains of addiction and alcoholism in my life. And I just wanted to reach out to whoever is hearing my message today and let them know that Jesus is in the business of changing lives. Thank you very much. My name is William Walter. I'm the acting co-director of Restoration of Hope here in Texarkana, but I haven't always been in that position. At the age of 17, I was introduced to methamphetamine, and it consumed my life for uh, many years, uh, leading me to do over two decades in prison, in bondage, uh, dealing with prison gang activity and just living a life of sin and destruction for many years. Um, I was eventually by uh, some, a man of God led to a program much like Restoration of Hope, and uh, on the altar uh, there, I, I was delivered miraculously from all my addiction and all my sin and everything in my life. Um, all it takes is being dedicated and leaving everything on, the, on God's throne and giving up everything in your past, and God will do the rest. My name is Philip Holt, and I'm from Restoration of Hope. Uh, I'm 34, and uh, when I was young, my mom, she was on drugs, uh, my mom and my stepdad, and uh, we used to be homeless. I uh, ended up, we, sometimes we ended up uh, sleeping outside, and I, 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 I would wake up in a ditch. We would wake up in a ditch, and uh and then all my life has been, all my uh, teenage life has been full of drugs and uh, being homeless, going to school. I found my new life in Jesus uh, ever since I, I moved to Texarkana from Oklahoma. And uh, this, is the only, this is the only life I know besides the other life. And it's, it's, a, it's a great life. It really is a great life. Uh, I'm, I am a new creation because I'm uh, and Second Corinthians five seventeen says if there is any a man if if a man is in Christ he is a new creation. And, uh, since I've been here I've grown uh, spiritually and uh, I know that I can't do it on my own. I need the the Holy Spirit's guidance to uh, gu direct me in everything that I do because I can't make it on my own. I've tried and I've tried and I tried and. So uh, all the times that I did, I fall even harder, and uh, this time I just uh, I, I can't rely on my own strength. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit, not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. He He's definitely turning a mess into a message. My name is Chase Varnall. I'm 21 years of age. My uh, DOC is K2 and Coke. I uh, I grew up in a really broken home around domestic violence and substance, substance abuse for most of my life. I started drugs when I was 14, be, started as a pill head, uh, went to pot, and then eventually went to the harder things, tried heroin, all kinds of stuff, trying to fill a hole in my heart that I couldn't find in anywhere but Jesus Christ. I spent about five and a half years of my childhood in mental institutions because my mom didn't want to deal with me. I was passed around from family member to family member because no one wanted to deal with me. I, uh, When I turned 18, I really went off the deep end. I really started using hard drugs really bad then. I ended up getting put in jail and uh, experiencing jailhouse religion and found uh, hope for the first time in my life. Then I backslid. And uh, went back into the world and started doing hard drugs again until I finally had enough and I came here to try to better myself. I've never been more closer to God than I am now. 
My name is Will. I'm a grateful believer from the Restoration of Hope, a discipleship program and ministry here in Texarkana, Texas, where God's been doing some big things in the lives of those who stay here. Uh, I grew up in a pretty religious family that, that also had some problems. My mom did drugs, and my, my dad was uh, he was a, a preacher and really involved in the church and stuff. So uh, I'd say that I, I was a believer from a young age. But uh, it was a long time before I started to come to have a relationship with Jesus. I started pulling away from my, my studies and my responsibilities pretty young while I was still in school. And uh, tried making my identity in drugs. And uh, that identity kind of stuck with me and became more or less uh, all I did uh, for a big part of my life. And... Uh, Later on, I, I ended up getting married, and uh, I was using it with my wife, and it was hurting us and people around us and everybody in, involved. And uh, uh, after we separated, I started getting uh, deeper into the drug scene. Uh, I didn't really have nowhere to go. I was running around, getting in more trouble than I had before. Uh, pretty much losing my mind and uh, and everything else on drugs and uh G God started showing himself to me in a big way and Jesus come into my life and helped me and uh really uh gave me hope and was a friend to me and uh that's why I'm here today and uh I'm just grateful and thankful for everything that God's doing and for this place. Thank you. Hello, my name is Danny Stone. I'm the co-founder of Restoration Hope with my mother, Sheila Stone. We are a faith-based ministry that helps men that's coming out of prison and also off the streets to find Jesus. We're mainly a discipleship program. We like to say um, instead of prison to streets, we go prison to praise. And through the love of Jesus Christ, we turn a mess into a message. Right now, we ask people to partner up with us. We just got a new building. We have 30 more beds we're about to add. Right now, we have 55 men in our program, and we want to add that. So we're just asking people that might want to partner up with us to look us up at www.restorationofhopes.com. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Thank you. In conclusion of this lesson, here is what Mark 11, 25, and 26 tells us. And when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Do you see how crucial it is for us to forgive? Is any offense worth losing hmm. your soul? Would you like to get rid of those angry feelings right now? Stop saying, it's their fault. Since Jesus suffered and died on the cross for us and shed his blood, we must forgive others as well. Forgiving is mandatory to receive God's blessings on this earth and go to heaven someday. Hmm. And if you would like to do that right now, we're going to agree with you in yes. prayer. Yes, Lord. Father, Father God, I ask you to forgive me. I ask, I ask you to, to forgive, forgive me, me for not forgiving those for not, not forgiving, forgiving those that have hurt me and my family that have hurt me and my family. You have shown me through your word, the Bible. You have shown me through your word, the Bible. You command me to forgive. You command me to forgive. If you could forgive others as you hung on the cross. If you could forgive others as you hung on the cross. You can help me forgive. You, you can, can help, help me forgive. forgive by the power of the Holy Spirit. By, by the power, power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank, Thank you, you for forgiving for me when I offended you. When I offended you with my sins. With, with my, my sins. sins. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your forgiveness. And now choose to forgive others. And now choose to forgive others. And I'm willing to leave the old lifestyle behind. And I'm willing to leave the old lifestyle behind. And live for you with my whole heart. And live for you with my whole heart. Amen. 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 And and friends, please get into to church and and read your Bible. Yes. Um, you know, I was able to to help my daughter with, through that very difficult time because I had the growth 
through being at church and the relationship with Jesus and reading my Bible, then I was able to help her. So please do that. That's very, very important. Yes. Uh, Because people all around us need us. Yeah. Um, I want to say one other thing. She got saved in the fifth prison mm -hmm. she was in Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after all those years of addiction of Mm -hmm. shooting up in her neck. By reading the Word of God. Yeah, that's it. And Just, that's so important because yeah. the Word of God is what sets you yeah, free. Yeah, supernatural. It's supernatural. I mean, it's, yeah. it's got power. It has power. I challenge you yes. to yes. read it. There yes. is supernatural yes. power in the Word of God. Yes. Um, and then Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So now, since you can walk the walk, yeah. go brag on Jesus. Yeah, Our website is recoverytodaytv.com. If you click the email button on our website, um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your testimony from um, be watching the TV show, um, how your life is going. If you have any questions or prayer requests, we'd be glad to, yes. to help you with those. And if you would be interested in being our partners, we could really use the help to get the information out to more and more homes. Yes. Um, so you can click on the Donate Now button, and we'd really appreciate it. And I hope you have a very blessed day. Yes. And remember, Jesus loves you, and you can have recovery today and every day, the shepherd's way. Amen. My name is Tim Bumpus. I am the president of Project New Start Treatment Center in Newport, Arkansas. We run a men's treatment center and a women's treatment center. We also have a pregnancy center. We just opened up a home for mothers with their children to come to treatment. And we also have a transition homes after you graduate. We put you in an apartment. We help you get a job. If you want to get your life together, we have a perfect place to do that. If you need us, give us a call at 870-523-8413. Or go to our website at projectnewstart.org. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, Shalom is a place in life where nothing is missing and nothing is broken. And so what we offer is a nine-month residential program. We do have a men's center and we have a women's center, and those two are separate. But we offer a nine-month program, and our prayer for those who are coming into it is that through a relationship with Jesus Christ, they would more and more begin to live a life where all of the missing parts of their life are brought back together and all of the broken parts of their life are mended because we truly believe that Jesus has the power to bind up the brokenhearted and to restore all the things that are lost as part of addiction. came to set you free Did it take you your whole life Hello, friends. Thank you for joining our show today, Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends. Barbara, Becky, and I thank you, and we hope you'll come back every week if you can. Our TV show airs not only across the United States, but also worldwide, 200 nations, and also podcasts and radio. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we.